today. So as we come to love on Jesus today, let us stand up with the choir and the praise team and sing and lift his name up on today. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, scripture will be coming from uh, Psalms 128, verses 1 through 6. And it reads, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, yeah. that walketh in his ways. Mm. For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Mm. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Yeah. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thy house. Thy children like an olive plant round about thy table. Yeah. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and, and thou shalt see good in Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children, and peace upon Israel. And the word of God is already blessed. And we're going to take the service a little higher. Lift up your voice and sing, and we will stand on the second stanza.
of February, amen, in the year of fruitfulness, amen. God calls us, amen, us to rise. He causes us to fall, but he always has a perfect place and plan in mind. As long as we continue to trust in him, amen, he will lead us and he will guide us. We do thank God for all of the leaders of this great church, amen, Ella Graham and all of the ministers, amen, to this choir once again, the ushers, amen, all the mothers, amen, and the deacons and those who work hard behind the scene. We thank God for each and every one of you. I just rose real quickly, amen, just to share with you, of course, we do uh, thank God for uh, Brother Courtney and Sister Venetia, amen, in the birth of their brand new baby girl. God bless you. And of course, we are praying, amen, for Talitha, the Harrison family, amen. Brother Anthony, we're lifting all up in prayer. Amen. And the loss, amen, of Brother Harrison. So we certainly, amen, whenever God is in the center, you, some things in the natural don't make sense. But things in the spirit, amen, it makes all the sense in the world. And sometimes when the old folks really couldn't understand it right then and there, they would just say, we'll understand it better. Bye. Bye. And bye. But in all these things, we are trusting in God. And of course, I know Sister Helen had lost in her family. They're heading to Detroit praying for them. Amen. As they head, amen, to Michigan. Lifting up the family. We know God will give grace. He will give strength. He will give peace and comfort. Amen. In times of loss. So therefore, just continue to trust Him. Of course, today was the day to... Uh, celebrate our youth celebrate black history amen. amen black history we are amen have made our mark here in america amen. in a great 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 way i know a lot of people are missing president obama because right now we don't know what we got in the white house amen, amen. but our trust is not in the government amen. the bible tells us the government shall be upon his shoulders amen. and his name shall be called wonderful amen. Council of the Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. But we do thank God, amen, for a young man who wanted to share with us on today for this Black History Month. Brother Poole is going to come in a little bit, amen, and give us uh, uh, his rendition, amen, of African American history. But when you begin to think about it in the areas of, of the arts, yeah. in the areas of, of education, yeah. in the areas of music, in the area of sports, yeah. amen? Uh, anybody seen the Green Book? Yeah. Amen, it's, it's nominated for an, an, an uh, Academy Award on tonight, but, but if you look and read the history of that, the Green Book basically let African Americans know where they could stop and use the restroom and where they could, where they could stay, amen? Where they could get something to eat. And so this guy, he was a, a very, very uh, talented and gifted musician. And he had a white driver to drive him to different places down here in the South, but they couldn't stop everywhere. So they had to use a green book just to know where they could stop, where they were accepted. Amen? I, I didn't live in a time where there was a white water fountain and a black water fountain, where it says whites only, it's blacks only. Amen? But that was a reality right here in the midst. I wasn't here even with the Jim Crow laws. Amen? But it was a reality. Our parents and grandparents actually lived through it. Amen? But we thank God for uh, integration. We thank God for the laws. I believe that was Brown versus the Board of Education in Topeka, Kansas. We have to look at the history. And, but we see the hand of God all in the midst of it. Of course, he used people. Amen. He used Dr. Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement. But the hand of God was right there in that situation. And I thank God that as a people, some of us have not yet overcome. But we shall overcome someday. And many of us can look back over our lives and we can testify how we got over. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Amen? Amen. I tell you, I thank God. I'm proud to be black. Amen? Sometimes they, the folks used to make you feel like you were inferior or that we were a second class citizen. But the devil is a liar. Amen? Say it loud. I'm black. You know? That was, who was that? B.B. King? Larry King? James King? James Brown? Amen? Praise the Lord. At this time, we're preparing for our offering. Receive all the way from Zumunda, South Africa. 
Okay, we're going to sow our seeds. There are tithes, there are offerings, there's the building fund, there's Pastor Love offering. So those are seeds that you can plant in. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do the youth for change. <laughs> And useful changes for scholarships. You can give pennies, quarters, dollars, whatever that you have to help the youth.
thank you for forgiving me over and over again. Yeah, I'm calling on you, Heavenly Father. I'm down on my knees. Say, call on you, no matter the hour. Lord, I may be. I've been messing up.
Amen. Praise the Lord. God clean this house from the inside out. Amen. Maybe we have a few witnesses here. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Hallelujah. Pick me up one day. Turn me around and place my feet on the solid ground. Wasn't fit to live, wasn't, wasn't fit to die. But he took our place instead. For that we give him praise. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. Amen. Amen. We're ready for the word of God. If you have your Bibles, go with us to the book of 1 Corinthians. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to be looking at verse number 1. And verse number 13. God bless you, Mother Georgia Gray. God bless you. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse number 1. We're going to skip down to verse number 13. Listen to what the Word of God says. It says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. In verse number 13, and now abideth faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Of course, I read from the New King James Version. Just for a little while, we would like to speak from the subject, a language that God understands. A language that God understands. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Your heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, how we love you, how we praise you, how we trust you, God. Father, we thank you, God, that you are in the cleaning business. You are in the healing business. You are in the blessing business, the forgiving business. God, I pray even now for your anointing. Use me as your instrument to deliver your word, I pray that it will be planted in the heart of your people, that it will yield 100-fold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. A language that God understands. Thank you, ushers. You may be seated. Have you ever talked to someone and concluded that they didn't understand a word you said? Yes, we often feel that we have spoken a million words, whether to our spouses, our parents, or our associates, but not a single word has been understood. And often we get angry with them and accuse them of not listening. Now, is it possible that they actually heard what you said? But they fail to understand it because it was spoken in a different language. You, you, you see, a language is a system of communicating thoughts and feelings through one of three ways, which can be by voice, sounds, gestures, or written symbols. Now, there are 6,912 known languages in the world today. And even among the 6,912 languages, there are thousands of dialects or variations of each of these known languages. Therefore, communication is extremely difficult between people of different nationalities, cultures, or races, or dialects, if those who are attempting to communicate do not speak the same language. Whether you know it or not, communication can sometimes be frustrating. Often people, even of the same nationality and race, find it difficult to communicate with each other because they don't speak the same language. The words of one generation mean something totally different to those of another generation. Should you want to tell me, tell me to chill? I mean, I'm thinking it's cold. 
But they say chill means calm down. Amen. The expressions of one culture are not interpreted the same as another culture. So to communicate effectively, it requires that those who are seeking to be understood or heard, they must learn to speak the same language. Now we've seen this principle play out in different scenarios throughout our lives. For example, a, a classroom teacher soon learns the students in her class all respond differently. With one student in class, she responds to a gentle touch or a word of encouragement, and she can be simply disciplined by expressing disappointment. Shame on you, Susie. I'm disappointed. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, but, but yet, another student, if you use the same method, they don't understand the language of gentleness. Yes, there are some who can only understand when the teacher is able to communicate in a language that they know, boy, you better sit your butt down right now. So, so you have to understand that we communicate differently. And, and then there are some parents and grandparents they really only speak with their with their body language, a, a, a frowning of the eye, yeah. or a stern uh, from a stern grandmother can pin a child to his or her seat, a, a raised finger or a tilt of the head can send a message that many children can understand clearly. And there are some some marriages experience difficulty because husbands and wives. Do not speak the same language. One speaks the language of action, and the other speaks the language of words. In other words, one partner is a doer and is frustrated because the other does not do that. The other partner speaks the language of talk in revelation and is frustrated because the other partner is not talking back. Politicians, they, they, they take polls to learn what's on the mind of the people. When they make speeches, they, they learn to talk their language. It's often hard to talk to politicians unless you learn the language of polls, votes, public opinion, and re-election. It's the only language many seem to understand. And sometimes there are differences between the pulpit and the pew when they don't speak the same language. Uh -huh. Parents and children often have difficulties, especially when parents can't seem to understand the language necessary to communicate with their children or when children have not learned how to speak the language of their parents. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, there was some controversy in the African-American community concerning whether or not it was proper for educators in colleges and universities to use what is known now as Ebonics to communicate with many children and students in a language they understand by teaching them basic knowledge that they needed to know for survival in the real world. That's what we call professional talk. There's also some street talk. Some people call it slang. But even those who have perfected the gift of language often find that while they can speak the language of others, they still have difficulty making the parties understand what they really mean. Therefore, those who have the gift of interpreting the language are needed. These special people have the gift of not only telling you what was said, but to make us sure that we understand the meaning of what was being said. They have both the gift of language and the gift of interpretation. Both the gift of language and interpretation are really spiritual gifts that's been endowed by certain believers by the Spirit of God. But the question today I want to ask, when you get ready to talk to God, what kind of language does He understand? I'm talking about whether you're Chinese, Arabic, Spanish, French, whether it's Ebonics, whatever, God understands the language of the human heart. Uh -huh. 
In other words, he understands the language of love, its compassion, obedience, and loving act. Yes, those who speak that language can always talk to God and know for certain that he understands. And as born again believers, we should talk to God frequently enough. And when we do, we must know and believe that he understands us because we're talking the language of heaven. And regardless of our race or nationality, we must know that he understands us because we are speaking a language that he understands. I'm talking about a language that God understands. Looking at our text today, this text focuses on Paul. As he emphasizes the importance of love over all the other spiritual gifts. Now, in the previous chapter, Paul had listed many of the gifts of the spirit. And he noted that all gifts come from the same source, which is the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, Paul listed nine categories of gifts, and among them was the gift of language and the interpretation of language. Some people call it tongues. There was one pastor that was in the military, and he had got filled with the Holy Spirit, and he was speaking in tongues when he was over in Iran. And one of the persons actually understood what he was saying in their language. So God is going to always have a way to get his word out, to get his message out, whether you have to learn it by the spirit or have, if you have to learn it through education. Amen. Amen. I'm telling us Paul, Paul spoke 13 different languages. Was it the Holy Ghost? No, he learned them in school, but the Holy Ghost can teach us something that we cannot learn in a textbook. Paul, when he's speaking about the gifts, he he made note that all of these came from the Holy Spirit, but not all believers possessed all the gifts. Now, the purpose of each gift is the advancement of the kingdom of God. And the nine gifts listed in this letter to the Corinthians, they represented the categories of gifts, but they weren't the only gifts in the Bible. You see, other gifts were listed in other books of the Bible to some of the different congregations. Some was the gift of just serving. Some was the gift of giving. Some was the gift of just hospitality. Amen? So, so, so therefore, we all have some type of gift to use for the glory of God. So the theme for each recipient of the gift was that the gift came from God. No per person was the owner of their own gift. God designed the gifts for believers to work together in the church where we can utilize our gifts in a way that can advance the kingdom and to edify the body of Christ. So, so he begins the verse by saying, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, which is obvious that, that to the reference that the gift of language and interpretation that was referred in chapter 12. See, Paul makes it extremely clear that what's important to God is that all believers must learn how to love each other and demonstrate that love through different acts and deeds because love is an action word. You can tell me you love me all day, but if you ain't doing nothing, that's not agape love. That's not biblical love. Amen? So love is something that's seen in action. So in, in chapter 13, Paul here, he ends with a final emphasis on the three things that are most essential to all born-again believers, which are faith, hope, and love. But then he says, but the greatest of these three is love. I'm still talking about a language. That God understands. So exactly what language does God understand? But the scripture gives us an idea of the kind of language God understands. And when we survey the many teachings in the Bible, we discover that God understands us when we speak in one of four different languages. And the first language that God understands is the language of obedience. Somebody say obedience. Amen. Yes, believers who want to talk to God can be sure that he will understand them if they speak in the language of obedience. You see, Jesus was preparing for the cross on Calvary. 
And he prayed very sincerely in a personal prayer in the garden of Gethsemane. But when he prayed, he used the language of obedience. In other words, his prayer to God included how he had obeyed God and carried out his plan. He talked to God about his mission on the earth, how he instructed his disciples. He talked to God about his proclamation of the word and how he has set the standard as relates to the kingdom of God. But even in the midst of that prayer, Christ began to ask for the cup that was set before him to be taken away. He, he spoke to God in the framework of obedience. And his words to God were simple. He wanted the cup to pass, but then he turned around and said, but only if it's your will. So, so here Jesus gives us an example in the garden that should, should indicate to each of us that as we attempt to talk to God, we must talk to him first in the language of obedience. Because God, he places a premium on obedience. And those who want to speak to him must be obedient because obedience is his kind of language. The word of God makes it clear that obedience is important to God. Leviticus 28 and 1 says, it tells us there is a blessing in obedience. Psalm 40 and 6 reminds us that obedience is better than sacrifice. And then, therefore, those who want to talk to God must learn the language of obedience. They expect him to hear and answer their prayers. Amen. Don't have a hard time getting prayer through. If we're walking in disobedience, because God understands the language of obedience. I'm talking about a language that God understands. So the first kind of language that God understands is the language of obedience. But then number two, the second language that God understands, it came through the praise song. It's called the language of repentance. Somebody say repentance. Yes, God also hears us when we talk the language of repentance. You see, King David talked to God on many occasions, but there were some occasions when, when he and God were not speaking the same language. Yes, after his sin with Bathsheba, David found it difficult to communicate with God because God was listening for repentance while David was still asking for blessings upon his kingdom. But it was only when David began to speak the language of repentance in Psalm 51 when he said, create within me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me that God began to listen because now David and he were speaking the same language. In a similar sense, we people today are attempting to speak to God about a variety of issues in our lives and we're seeking divine intervention without personal repentance. In other words, until we repent, God is saying, brick wall, talk to the hand, because right now, why are you asking me to do this and that and that? And you know what you did last night. You know what you did to him. You know what you did to her. So God is saying, I'm waiting for you to repent. I'm not going to bless you when you're going in the wrong direction. Repent means to turn. Go the right way. It means to turn from the wrong way. And go the right way. And whether you, you know it or not, it's useless to go to God in prayer and ask him to bless you or to open a door or to heal your body while you're still living in sin. So as long as sin exists, our prayers are wasted because we're speaking a language that God refuses to hear. Therefore, we must go before God just like David did. In a spirit of repentance, knowing that then and only then can we expect God to hear us. And until we repent, it's even difficult to find God, let alone communicate with him. Sometimes when we stray away, we feel lost. We feel separated from God. 
Isaiah 55, 6 and 7 puts it this way. Seek ye the Lord while he be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous his and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let them return to the Lord. And he will have mercy on him and he will abundantly pardon. Sometimes God is just listening for these words. Lord, forgive me. God, I was wrong. I messed up. And sometimes we sin against the Lord, but sometimes we sin against brothers and sisters. Amen? And God is okay. You don't ask me for forgiveness. Now go to your brother. Go to your sister and say, look, man, my bag. I'm so sorry. I messed up. Please forgive me. So God has said, I'm listening right now. Whenever that talk, that type of language, amen, is in the midst, God is saying, you're talking. You're talking my language because it's a language. That God, yes. God understands. So, so the first language that God understands is the language of obedience. obedience. The second language that he understands is the language of yes. repentance. But then number three, the third language that God understands is the language of faith. Yes. Somebody say faith. faith. Yes, God hears and he understands the language of faith and those who really love God have learned how to walk by faith and not by sight because we know that's the language that he understands. See, God spoke to Abraham, who is known as the father of faith, and Abraham re responded to God in the language of faith. But if Abraham had not been a man of faith, he would have understood God, what he meant when he said, take your son upon the mountain and sacrifice him yes. unto me. In other words, take that son your wife just had, uh -huh. the son that I promised that you was gonna have, mm -hmm. and take him up to Mount Moriah mm -hmm. and kill him. Yeah. And Abraham said, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Told his servants, saddle up the donkey. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Told the boy, boy said, where are we going, daddy? We're going to offer a sacrifice to the Lord. So, okay, let's go sacrifice to the Lord. <laughs> they got up on the mountain. And the boy looked there and said, Dad, I, I see the wood. And I see the fire. But Daddy, what? We're at the sacrifice. He just looked at him like. He said, the Lord will provide a sacrifice. And the Bible says he even raised the night again, boy. And an angel came and stopped his hand and said, stop it. I see that you trust me, Abraham. Amen? So Abraham's, his actions spoke of his faith. And God responded to him in the language of faith. And he told him to look over there in the bushes. And he provided him a ram in the bush. And he sacrificed the ram instead of the sun. In other words, the same time they were going up the mountain. The ram was coming up the other side of the mountain. So God already had it in motion. Sometimes we don't see how God's going to work things out. And as you move in obedience, as you as you act on faith, by the time you get to where you need to go, that door that was closed is going to spring open because you obey the voice of the Lord. I'm telling you, He hears the language of faith. Mm. For those who don't understand the language of faith, they're often confused about the actions of God's people because sometimes faith don't make sense. James 1 and 6 tells us that when we ask for something, we need to ask for it in faith without wavering, not doubting, not being a double-minded person because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So therefore, sometimes my faith may not make sense, but it will make a miracle. But, but if I continue to doubt the word. Those who doubt 
will do without. But if I believe and trust and ask in faith, God will hear us and respond and bring it to pass. And whenever we talk by faith and we ask by faith, we're talking a language that God understands. I'm talking about a language. God understands. Somebody say a language that he understands. So finally, my brothers and sisters, I'm through. We want to talk to God in a language that he understands. We have to talk the talk of obedience, repentance, of faith. Then there's another language that God clearly understands. And it's the language of love. Somebody say love. Yes, love is a language that he understands well. And we should know by now why he understands love so well. Because God is love. Yes, Paul, he told the Corinthians that they could have an abundance of gifts. But greater than all of those gifts combined is the gift of love. Love is a language that God understands the most. Because love is an action word that gives birth to so many other words and actions. You see, where, where, there, is love, where there is love, there is compassion. Yes, compassion is an extension of love. But we can't talk to God about having compassion on us until we learn how to, how to have compassion on somebody else. In other words, those who work to help the poor and needy in the world, they are speaking a language of love because God understands it. Because he said in Matthew 25 and 40, he said, in as much as you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, yeah. you've done it also unto me. Yeah. When you feed the hungry, clothe the naked, when you go out of your way to help somebody else, and you expect nothing else in return, God looks down and he said, you're speaking my language, and God responds to his language. But also, there are those who have show love to the least of these, he said, they understand my language. But those who are also rooted and grounded yeah. in the word of God yeah. are speaking a language yeah. that God understands. Yeah. All of us got a Bible. Yeah. All of us have access to the internet and apps. Yeah. Yeah. But how many are getting into the word of God? Yeah. Because I'm telling you, the more you get into the word of God, the more the word of God gets into you. So therefore, I can say it like David said, thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. So whenever you got the word and you speak the word, you're speaking a language that God understands. Yeah. Yes, Jesus said in John 15 and 7, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. And when you know a language that God understands, there are so many other ways that you can talk to him. Anybody remember how Big Mama would just move on into the Lord? She was just moan and moan. And sometimes the grandchildren would say, Grandma, what you talking about? Grandma, who you talking to? And Grandma would just answer, I'm just talking to the Lord. You see, the devil don't like it when you moan. But we serve a God who understands a moan because it's the language of the heart. But don't you know he understands body language too? That's when the old saints would just say, if I can't say a word, let me just wave my hand because God's being just that good. But not only does he understand body language, but he understands the language of prayer. We can argue whether you got to kneel in prayer, whether you stand or raise your hands or shut your eyes. But the fact is, God hears the sincere prayer. And prayer is a language.
words that he understands. So when you're down and out, if you pray in faith, God will make a way because you're talking a language that he understands. When you've been defeated on every hand, but you pray to God for victory and deliverance, God will come in like a mighty warrior because you're speaking a language that God Understands uh, when the world have knocked you down, uh, but you pray and ask God to help you stand one more time. Uh, God will come uh, and He'll pop you up. Uh, lean on Him uh, because you're talking the language that He understands. Uh, and don't you know why? Because prayer it changes things. Uh, when you talk to God in faith, uh, it's gonna change your situation. When you talk to God. It's going to change your situation. When you talk to God in repentance, it's going to change your situation. When you talk to God in love, it's going to change your whole situation. We know he understands this. Because John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him yes. shall not yes. perish, but have everlasting life. Yes. You see, it was the language of love yeah. that prompted Jesus yeah. to pick up that old rugged cross. Yeah. It was the language of love that prompted Jesus when he said, Father, forgive them, yeah. for they know not what they do. Yeah. It was the language of love when he said from the cross, it is finished. And because of the language of love, he, he died on the cross of Calvary. But early Sunday morning, love got back up, but it got back up in power. So now it's called the power of love. And it's greater than any other power that's here on earth. So now when we come to God, we have the same power at our disposal. And we can talk and walk in the language of love. And we can be guaranteed that God understands. Does anybody know a language that he understands? God, he understands. Man looks on the outward appearance. But God looks, he looks at the heart. And sometimes we have to trust him, even when we don't understand. But when we don't understand, he still understands. Look at your neighbor and ask him, do you understand? A language that God understands. Come on, put your hands together.